welcome back. Our next guest, I have to admit, I either want to be her or I want to adopt her, and I know you will too. You're going to love her. Jean Palin is everything I could possibly wish for, and she is an adventurer, and she is an author, and she is just a woman living her life out loud. She's been an activist. She is showing us the way, and more than anything, she was a five-year-old New Jersey cowboy. I grew up in New Jersey. I rode horses. I never called myself a cowboy. I want to hear that story. And I know you do too, Jean. Welcome to the show. Well, thank, thank you, you for so being much. here. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. I'm delighted to be here. And let me tell you, there aren't all there weren't any horses in the town I grew up in, but I still <laughs> wanted to be the cow, the first New Jersey cowboy. <laughs> I totally get it. And my next door neighbor owned a stable. Oh. And so we used to every every Sunday, uh, my brother and I would go and we would get our lesson and then we would walk the ponies around the circle. And we eventually graduated to the trail rides. And so I guess I was a New Jersey cowboy. So thank you for well, that. The, the truth is this, about that story is that I really wanted to be the hero New Jersey cowboy. Oh. I wanted to like show the bad guys that that was not the way to live. <laughs> I had you have been an activist from a very yes, early yes, age. <laughs> yes. I had two lines in, we'll talk about the book that I wrote, two lines in the cowboy story. One says, I remember the lines from the four o'clock TV Western. The good guys always said, Come on, partner, you don't want to do that now, do you? The bad guys always said, we'll ambush them in the canyon. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to be the hero. <laughs> I, it never dawned on me, even all those years watching Bonanza and the Virginian, <laughs> right. but it never dawned on me to be the hero. I just wanted to ride the horses. <laughs> gotcha. Funny, funny. But you have been a New Jersey cowboy, at least the hero in your own mind. You have hosted Gloria Steinem in Alabama. You have had an awkward drink with a young Clarence Thomas. Oh, yeah. And you have been a, on a civil rights and activist journey, um, obviously, since the very early days. But yeah. Jean, we started talking about growing up in New Jersey before there was a turnpike connection. That's when right. My grandparents would take us in twice a year to see the Rockettes. <laughs> And my, my parents took us in to see the Rockettes at Christmas and at Easter for the special shows. And my memory is of that magnificent organ they had at Radio City, probably still have, at they Radio did. City Music Hall that would just fill the air. And the glamorousness of that old Art Deco building you know, the was so whole experience, dangerous. right? It stays yeah. with you. It yes. stays with you. Not yes. only live performance, but it was the two hour drive in, which of yes. course I fell asleep. The two hour drive out, which was always with a stop at their favorite Chinese restaurant for right. dinner. Right. Yeah. Yes. Those, those memories, those are the memories that stay with you your entire life. And you I'm have- not even sure why, but they do. They yeah. do indeed. And you have taken the time to write a book put your memories down for all of us to learn from. And the book is called Feisty. Feisty, and... a memoir in little pieces. So okay. why little pieces? Okay, well, the book is made up of, you ready, 65 chapters, but oh. each one is a page or two pages. Each one is a memory told. And so they're very, very short. You can read Feisty, a memoir in little pieces in one evening if you're a dedicated reader. But you just pick them up. And, and look, I'm 82 years old. I, like all of us who are here, lived through the pandemic. I don't know about others, but I was bored out of my mind. You know, I couldn't even go to Taco Tuesday trivia anymore which was sort of, I had just moved. It's like the last bastion of safety, right? Yes, yes. And so I was at a loss and I started thinking about all those little memories like you just talked about with Radio City Music Hall, all the little memories that stay in your mind for years. And I mean, we all know about our divorces, our marriages, our children, our lovers, our, you know, whatever, the big things in our lives. But there are a lot of little things that stay there. 
And I started thinking there must be a reason that they're there. Why has it stayed in my mind so clearly? So I just started writing them down. And once I wrote them down, a lot came back. I could remember, well, what was she wearing? Or where exactly were we? Or why was I upset about that? And each one of those memories became stories that go through my whole life, starting at age four with, I want to be the person New Jersey cowboy, right? And ending with me holding a protest sign for women's rights at age 82 in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Do you know, so that's that's sort of what gave rise to the book was boredom. But what let, what happened, and I want to tell any everyone who's listening to you, this kind of writing about your life is the best and cheapest form of therapy you could get. I mean, really, it's just you and your pen and paper or your computer or whatever. And reliving some of those, what I found was I really finally understood what my life has been about. That was huge for me because I really didn't know, you know, what was my life? How to, what was the purpose? What was the point? You know, what all those things I did, good things, bad things, horrible things, wonderful things, you know, successful successes failures were they just random events or was there some sort of pattern to them and i saw my pattern and what i was up to and what i had accomplished and it, it could not have been more rewarding and as i, 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 I could have spent thousands of no yeah. i can't imagine and interestingly i had I had a similar experience recently, so I'm Thank so you. glad you're sharing this because there's a young homeless woman on the street mm -hmm. here nearby, mm -hmm. and um, and she, I sit with her periodically, and I'll bring her a Starbucks or something, and and we visit, and she's lovely, and she's just fallen on a hard time, and this is her choice, but she loves my dog, and when we're walking by, we'll stop and visit, and we were talking about travel. And she said, so where have you been? And I started recounting all the places I've been. And like you said, as the memories came up, number one, it made room for more memories. Yes. But number two, it left room for so much gratitude yes. and a deeper understanding of, well, maybe why I do the things I do now for good or for bad or for evil, whatever, <laughs> whatever that may be, as you're pointing out. So I'm so glad you said that. I thought, Am I the only one who gets this? No, no, absolutely not. It's, it's a, it's amazing. The, the, and here's what I've discovered. You know, I'm going around doing, um, little pieces uh, with neighbors and with groups talking about the book and reading them little pieces from them, and what I see is that people, particularly in the chapters where I'm the most vulnerable, where I talk about my addiction to alcohol, you know, which was in my life. When I talk about being molested as a child, those are the things that people respond to. Because I've gone first, people will then say, thank you. I'll tell you an experience. I've just got finished recording the audio version of Feisty. And I was recording it and reading that chapter about the molestation. And I, now this is 82, 80 years, how am I, 72 years later, okay? And emotion came up as I was reading and my voice shook at the end of the chapter. And the 30 year old male engineer who I was working with came into the studio and said, are you okay? And I said, oh, sure. And he said, thank you for writing that, thank you. And uh, he said, that was brave. And I said, listen, this is something that happens to seven or eight out of 10 little girls. And it happens to little boys. And he said, I know it happened to me. Thank you for writing that. This is a 30 year old straight male, do you know, nice guy. And I, so I knew that writing in this way would touch people and allow them to look at their own lives and their own experiences. You know, and come at peace with them. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's the gift in it, 
really. Yeah. It's the gift in writing anything. It's the gift in allowing people to read from a page and take ourselves out of ourselves. Yes. But when you yes. do that in a way that reflects back to us that we are not alone. Oh, yes, exactly. Exactly right. Yeah. And the beauty is that you have lived to tell the story. And as yeah. my father reminds me all the time, the longer you live, the longer you're going to live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very wise. <laughs> right? I'm pretty sure he got that from Yogi Berra, but he loves it. And we're going to quote my dad on that one. <laughs> probably, probably funny. So, Jean, tell us yeah. um, where where can we find the book? When yes, absolutely. It's available? Sure. Um, by the time I think we're on the air, it will just have been published. Um, it will be on Amazon. Now I will show you, this is going to look funny. Here's what the cover of the book. Now, this will Without not that. be on. This <laughs> says not for sale, not for sale. This is the review copy down here. It will not be here. And I just love the way they put it right through my face. <laughs> <laughs> because the cover of this was actually taken when I moved to Anna Marie Island, Florida. I got on the city commission because I was bored. I was retired and bored. And I fought the developers who were destroying the island. This is in Florida. And my very last meeting, when I was yet again retiring, I wore this outfit to the commission meeting, <laughs> Wonder Woman. And I used this snapshot for the cover of the book. So wow. this is nice it, it will be on Amazon for sure by the time I think people are watching this. And I really, it's small, it's smaller than a regular book. And I wanted it that way because it's, it's a small book, really quite a short book and it will fit in purses, backpacks, Love you know, that. so people can carry it around easily and read it when they feel like reading something. So that's, that's where it's perfect. available. Well, as yeah. far as I'm concerned, Feisty is my next gift to everyone I know. So I love it. warning my friends right now, look out for the package. It's coming your <laughs> way. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And Jean, you have another project that you run called mm -hmm. Old Women Who Write. Old Women Who Write. Yes. I started Old Women Who Write website first because and the purpose of it was to encourage women in their 70s, 80s, and 90s to write. And, and here's behind that is the fact that I think once we pass 70, 75, we have lost identity in this culture. We don't have a role in this culture anymore. We're not the parents, maybe we're the grandparents still or the great grandparents, but that's not a role that we're used to having in society. We're largely ignored until we're put away somewhere. So, so the, the Something purpose, to look forward to. The, yeah, the purpose is to reclaim who we are, to give ourselves a voice as if feisty, to give ourselves a voice to say, here's what I see. Here's what we as an older generation have to say. The generation that was once considered the wise ones is now sort of pushed aside. So the pro purpose of old women who write is to do that. I also have a Facebook group, a private group called old women who write that anyone is welcome to join except for you know bots from the middle east we don't there you go <laughs> we keep trying to join to find their next scam victim um so uh, yeah i would happily enjoy and uh, invite anyone to who likes writing or thinks they want to write we have a lot of aspiring writers in that group also to come or maybe someone who's been inspired by your story about feisty yes. there are yes. so many ways to write today it's such a beautiful opportunity absolutely and thank you for joining us we will you have so to welcome. have you back we have other projects i know that you've been working on we're going to talk about them another time but thank you for joining us and delightful it's been great fun thank, thank you, you. And we'll be right back.